Okay, so uh, today I will discuss again about the methods, different methods of heat quality evaluation in livestock. In last class, uh, I have discussed some methods and today I will continue the same topic and uh, we will discuss different other methods how we can evaluate the heat quality in livestock. So, uh, here you can see that uh, this is uh, net protein utilization or NPU. So, net protein utilization, which is the proportion of nitrogen in air that is retained by the animal itself. And uh, this NPU is the product of biological value and uh, digestibility in terms of net protein utilization. So this is the product of molecular value and digestibility. So when we combine both of these, so then NPU will come. Next to that, uh, this is uh, net protein balance or NP. This is another method. This is for protein which is available for metabolism by animals so the protein which is actually available for metabolism and that is net protein value and uh, the uh, product of net protein utilization and percentage crude protein is coming under the net protein value and we can calculate as per net protein utilization and percentage of the crude protein of the diet Next to that, that is ileal digestibility. What is that? Ileal digestibility, actually ileum is the in part of the small intestine. And uh, availability of amino acid, this is primarily determined by the digestibility of that particular amino acid. And the digestibility is measured at the end of the small intestine. That is at ileum level. So, that is why this is called ileal digestibility of particular amino acids. Uh, it is generally uh, there is no amino acid absorption from the large intestine. It is generally conceptual. But some amount of the amino acid which is not digested in the small intestine or might are not digested by, digested by the microflora uh, and uh, it can be available in the large intestine for absorption and thus they can be prevented from the appearing in fishes. So a small quantity may be appear present in the large intestine and can be absorbed. But in general there is no amino acid absorption takes place in the large intestine portion of the digestive tract. And that is why the concept of ileal digestibility has been established. So ileal digestibility of the amino acid is very much important. And when we talk about the protein quality and uh, quality of the amino acid and supplementation of the amino acid, dose of the amino acid. So when we think about the ability of the amino acid, then we should think first the, what is the ileal digestibility of that particular amino acid that is available for the that particular species. So ileal digestibility is very much important. How much amino acid which is digested in the ileum and absorbed by the system. How we can measure the ileal digestibility of that amino acid? So ileum digestibility, ileal digestibility which can be measured from either total recovery of the ileum flow from uh, ileorectal anastomosis, ileorectal anastomosis, IRA. We can hit it uh, in the ileum position of the uh, non-dominant species like pig 
and we can collect the total recovery of the helium flow and by that way we can measure the digestibility of that helium flow. It can be measured uh, by application of the different digestible marker and which is generally used for measurement of the digestibility under the field condition and that is the chromic oxide you can use chromic oxide as a internal marker or in digest tool marker for measurement of the digestibility and, uh, and the sample can be collected and by difference we can uh, measure the digestibility of that particular protein field and there are different formula by that way we can calculate the digestibility helium digestibility of the particular field that is the apparent digestibility we can calculate by this formula and like that uh, the true digestibility or corrected, corrected apparent digestibility we can calculate by this formula so you will get this presentation and you can download it from the university website uh, i have sent or it is sent in this presentation for a protein so you can download it and you go through this uh, presentation and this formula how we can calculate the apparent digestibility and corrected apparent digestibility, ileal digestibility. Uh, next to ileal, ileal, ileal digestibility, that is the biological issue of available amino acid. How we can, what is the importance of biological essay of available amino acid? Actually, available amino acid content of any food protein that may be assayed by the measuring of the lipid feed conversion efficiency or nitrogen retention of the animal. When the animal is given the intact amount, intact protein as a supplement to a diet which is deficient in the particular amino acid. You should remember this. When the animal given the intact protein as a supplement to a diet which is deficient in the particular amino acid under investigation or under trial and the response to the test material response to the test material which is compared with the response to the supplements of the pure amino acid so by that way we can calculate the biological essay of the available amino acid present in the diet or particular diet and uh, in this method, which has been successfully uh, measured for the, this uh, essential amino acid like lysine, methylene, as well as cysteine also. But the major disadvantage of this uh, method, or which is associated with the biological method, uh, is that the time consuming technical expertise is needed and supply of the suitable animal. So, other than this, the major uh, problem uh, of preparing the diet, which is deficient in a specific amino acid, but adequate in other respect. So, sampling and uh, the testing of the sample, that means evaluation of the sample is also a major concern while preparing the diet, which is deficient in particular amino acid, but fulfill all the amino acid in other respect. So this is, these are the disadvantage of this biological method. <laughs> Next to that uh, biological method, this is the microbiological issue of essential amino acid. We can assay uh, essential amino acid with the help of the uh, microorganism. Actually, certain microorganisms which uh, have amino acid requirement, like higher animals, and which have been used for the evaluation of the protein quality or food protein quality. So, the method which is based on the measuring the growth of microorganism in culturable media that includes the protein under test or under trial. And this can be applicable in the laboratory as well. We can culture the microbes with the application of that test protein. 
and we can see the growth of that particular microbe. And the best result uh, which have been found or obtained with the Streptococcus germogens and Tetrahymena pyriformis. So these two microbes giving the best result. I'll uh, assess the essential amino acid quality. Actually, in, in this uh, Streptococcus uh, gymogen, which is uh, used after an amino acid or the enzymes, enzymatic predigestion of food protein, which is estimated for the availability of the lysine and methionine, these two essential amino acids. And tetrahymena pyriformis has been has the intrinsic proteolytic activity and used for suitable protein without predigestion. And the uh, improved method where the predigestion with enzymes, predigestion with the enzyme that is protonin, that enzyme protease, which is protease, and the trade name of that enzyme is protease. And uh, measuring response in terms of tetrahymenol, this is the trade name of that uh, measuring response uh, in terms of tetrahymenol content of the culture medium which gives result for available lysine, methionine and tryptophan that correlate well with the those biological acid. So by that way we can uh, uh, assay the we can apply the microbiological assay of that particular amino acid or uh, like methionine and lysine as well as the tryptophan and we can correlate with this Three amino acid with this microbiological activity and the growth of the these two microorganisms and how this uh, uh, enzymatic activity takes place in the culture medium. So next to that the chemical method uh, as well uh, we can say uh, we can estimate the protein quality by the application of the chemical method and we can use the fluoro to to four dinitrobenzene FNDB, FDNV, and FDNV, uh, which is reactive with the lysine, and that method is proposed by KJ Carpenter. So, chemical method is not much suitable, uh, not much applicable, but we can assess the protein quality in livestock by application of the chemical method. I think. Next uh, is the uh, dye binding method, and uh, which is widely used for estimating the protein in food like cereal as well as the milk protein. Cereal protein and milk protein can be estimated by dye binding method in uh, the uh, protein which is available in the food. And the method which are rapid and give uh, uh, reproducible results and which has been used for the measuring of the total basic amino acids and reactive lysine. So basic amino acid can be estimated, can be evaluated by dye binding method as well as reactive lysine can also. And uh, orange G, orange G, which has been used, the dye orange G, which has been used along with two, four, six, trinitrobenzene, sulfonic acid, and propionic anhydride. That propionic anhydride, which is a blocking agent, and which has been proved effectively for estimating the lysine content of any kind of the cereals. However, it is less effective for the animal protein source, like fish protein and uh, the meat meal. So animal protein source is RNG dye is less effective. And there are different factors which affect the amino acid assay. And uh, we can see here that the change in concentration of one or more amino acid. So concentration is very much important, how much concentration which is present in the particular 
kind of the diet or protein diet. So change in concentration of one or more amino acid, which increase the amount of other required to maintain the growth rate. So concentration may affect the amino acid acid. Certain amino acid like uh, tryptophan and histidine. These two amino acid, which may be toxic. So, so the kind of the amino acid also affect the amino acid acid. And concentration of these uh, two amino acid, which is far greater than the normal level in the food. So, when concentration is higher side, then it may be toxic for the animal. So it may affect the growth performance of the live human as well. Some amino acid also having antagonism effect, antagonism activity, and this antagonism may exist between the specific acids, amino acids, and which affect the utilization of another or other particular amino acid. So antagonism is also one of the important factor of assaying the amino acid. Some anti-nutritional factor also present in the uh, diet or food protein. So anti-nutritional factor which may also affect the utilization of other nutrients which is available in that particular diet. So presence of anti-nutritional factor may also affect the amino acid acid. Some enzyme inhibitors, lectins, polyphenolic compounds, and certain other non-protein amino acid, like mimosine, which is toxic amino acid. So different non-protein amino acid, which is also present in the uh, different ingredients and in diet of the livestock, feed and fodder of the livestock. So these enzyme inhibitors, lectins, polyphenol compounds, and non-protein amino acid, which is widely affected, uh, affect the amino acid acid. And these are some important factors which particularly affect the amino acid acid when we can estimate the protein quality of that particular feed. So you should remember the factors which are affecting the amino acid acid. So this is uh, about the today class and you should go through this presentation. I will send you this and it has been uploaded on the university website. You can go through this.